Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for being with us today. Hi, Lori. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here today. Of course. You know, I'm always excited when we're, it's webinar day, and we are talking about um, start to finish tickets, table sponsors. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you for spending a little bit of time with us today. So uh, if you're new to Octria, then I want to let you know that you're in great company. 45,000 auctions and fund fundraisers have been run through Octria, raising over $500 million. And this is just a sample of those amazing organizations. And I'd love to see your name up there too. Right, Tracy? Yes, great things are happening and we appreciate all the work that you guys are doing. Absolutely. So this is part of a, um, a four-part webinar series. Um, we talked about common setups in the last one. We're going to talk about tickets, tables, sponsors, and then you can join us for the next two. We're going to do items, donations, raffles, and then we're going to talk about opening, bidding, closing, and collections in the fourth one. So here's what the agenda looks like. We're going to do start to finish setups, printables, selling, and you can use all these for training with your staff, staff and volunteers. We're going to talk about cash donations, table seatings, printing your table lists, your meal lists. We're going to talk about sponsorships and tickets for admission. These are tickets for admission, um, ticket setup. Um, as well as wrap it all up with communications and reports. And here, for those that like pictures, here's a pictorial representation of what this agenda is going to look like. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one we're going to talk about is cash donations here. And you can do this one of three ways. Ultimately, it's going to show up on your event website. You can set up your total goal within the dashboard and then show it on your event website with a pretty thermometer that shows how much money that you've raised. So we have a video ready for you. We're going to talk about setting up your donations as an item, setting up your donations as a website element, or recording donations um, completely from the internal side as an admin. I brought along some videos and here we go with the first one. There's a couple ways to set up donations within the Octria platform, but if you're setting something up as an item, as a fund in need, here's what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna come to item. I will go ahead and add an item. I'll put in a description and then your item type is going to be donation. That's the most important part here. Item type donation. So I'm going to put an image in here that just says fund and need item type web website with a description on it. I can come down a little further and this is where I can change the um, donation level amounts. All you need is a numerical figure followed by a comma. So let's see how that looks on the website. This is the fund and need. In order to drop that onto your page, you'll put in a catalog, and then I'm gonna configure the catalog. But I wanted to show just the item type donation. So I'm gonna click on donation and click off the others. And that's what it looks like. Let's mess around with this a little bit more. I don't need drill down, I don't need pagination. And I'm gonna make this a full item card. And look how nice that looks on the website. If you want to set up just a simple cash donation on your website element, that's super easy. So this template already has one on here and it's done up really nice. If you want to edit the donation levels, you come over into the element itself, click on the target button here, and then change the configurations for the donation levels. So. I am going to drop off the 2,500. I'm gonna go on the front end and add in a smaller donation, hit save, and there it is. And if the template you chose didn't have a donation element or you eliminated yours and wanna add it back in, that's easy. Just drag and drop the pre-built element and here it is. If you wanna make an edit to the donation levels, you just click on the cog, make any sort of donation level adjustments. Remember to put a comma in between the amounts and save it. That looks good. Now I wanna change the image, same thing. Edit, select image, drag and drop the image that you like, save that 
and you're done. Here's how that looks on the website also. Recording a donation is of course easy with Octria. Let's show you how to do that. So if you are handling a paddle raise or if somebody is donating at the door, if you're just doing a cash donation, you don't need to choose an item number. You just need to put in the bidder name as well as the amount that they want to donate. I'm gonna do $180 here. I can also pin that amount. So if I'm going through a paddle raise and I know there's a bunch of repeats that are at the same level, I can pin that amount, continue to spin through my list of bidders and record those quick. This is how fast you can record fund and needs at an event. So I know I went fast, but I wanted to make sure I encapsulated everything in there. Feel free to slow down any of these videos, pause them and take a look at them a little closer as, as you see fit. Okay, we're gonna move on to tickets, tables, and sponsors. Not in that order though. We're gonna start with sponsors first. These can be handled within the Octria platform. And then of course, you can put the, this information up on your event website and it looks gorgeous for the public consumption. We're gonna start with tables first. And you can print um, your seating tables as well as provide any information that you need for your caterers or for your team internally. I do have a walkthrough video on this. We're gonna talk about table seatings and reports. Off to the video we go. Manipulating your table seating with Octree is easy. Because there are people, I'm going to come to bidders, and then the tables are located under that. If I want to add a brand new table, I can do so. You can see I have a couple that are already created because when somebody made a purchase for the table, it created their own table. I have a separate table here for board members and you can include that to differentiate your tables. Let's talk about the seating. I'm going to go ahead and view my tables that have open seats. And then I can see that there's three people at table three. I have plenty of room there. So I'm gonna come down and choose my first couple bidders that are unseated. Click on the button, put them in table three, next one, table three, next one, table three. Now when I scooch up to the top, I can see that those bidders are now lit, seated at table three. If I want to look at just a single table and drag drop, I can do that also. I'm gonna drag the first three people into this empty table and you can see that they're listed there with a couple extra seats still open. Let's talk printing. You may wanna print for your caterer or use it for some Avery labels. Um, here's how you would do that. I can go into my printer report and include or exclude any columns I want on these reports. And you'll do this on any report that you're using within the Octria platform. Check on the columns you want, click continue. Then at the bottom, I can export this as a CSV, Excel, or a PDF file, depending on what you want to do with it afterwards. I hope you fill all your tables. Now let's move on to sponsors. I always say sponsors beget sponsors. Once you have one, more will come in. We have an entire webinar on how to maximize your sponsorship opportunities, and I know that you can do it. Um, so let's see how that looks within the Octria platform. Um, sometimes people will get confused between sponsors and bidders and donors. Here's a quick little chart to kind of narrow it down. The key point is a bidder is created for a single event. A donor is created at an organization level. And this shows the checkboxes of what you can do with each of those. Um, I would recommend setting your sponsors up as bidders, especially if they're gonna have tickets um, and if you wanna sell them on the website. Let's talk a little closer about sponsorships. Are they going to include tickets or not include tickets? So with and without. So when you're indicating your sponsorship um, as a ticket item, you wanna click is sponsorship on each of those because Further down the line, you'll be able to include them on your sponsorship catalog and add some logos and things along those lines. So just keep that in mind. As you're going through, whenever you're setting up the items or your tickets, you wanna click that little checkbox that says, 
is sponsorship. I brought along a video. We're going to talk about general information, sponsorships with tickets, sponsorships without tickets. I'm going to talk about making an offline sale, including your sponsor logo, and then a sponsorship recap. Let's view the video. Here's an information page just to get you acquainted with sponsorships. You can sell sponsorships with tickets or without tickets, and they're set up two different ways. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like within the Octria platform, but know that there is a difference. If you're selling with tickets, it's a ticket item. If you're selling without tickets, it's a simple for sale item. The rest of the process is the same. You're going to mark them as a sponsorship, and after the sponsorship is sold, you will upload the sponsor logo to the bidder record. Here's how that looks. Let's start with sponsorships that include tickets. And because they include tickets, I'm going to start on my tickets dashboard. You would start with add new ticket item, but I have already one set up here. That way you don't have to watch me fill in a form. You're probably pretty good at that, but I want to point out the most important parts. So here's a silver sponsorship. I'm going to give it a title that's appropriate and a description. This one's going to include eight tickets to the event. So I'm going to include that in the quantity for the admission tickets for eight. And this is the most important is sponsorship. I'm going to mark that as yes and click the checkbox. Let's look at this on the outside looking in as somebody that wants to purchase the sponsorship. I'm going to come in here, click sponsorship, add it to cart, continue to my details. And then at that point in time, the person that's purchasing the sponsorship can indicate whether it's for themselves or for guests. They can include the meal choices at that time if they need, or they can save that for later and then edit it at another time. As the purchaser, this is what the email will look like. They'll get an email that includes all the information on each ticket. And if they wanna update any of those to send the tickets to a friend, click the update button, and record anything you need to update the record. It's that simple. This is how sponsorships will be set up if they don't include tickets. I can set this up as an item. You are gonna hit add new item. I have one set up for you, so let's see how that looks. So I have sponsorships, no tickets to make it super obvious here in the demo. I'm gonna set that as a for sale item. And the most important part is come down here, click on the part that says is sponsorship and click the button. How about a nice image? Just for purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna put a no admission tickets image on there. And flipping over to your event website, you can see it's listed here under sponsorship opportunities. Many times sponsors will wanna drop off a check for you and that's totally fine. Come down to tickets, Go to sell tickets. This is where you want to put in the information that's related to the person that's giving you the check for the sponsorship. Of course, you're going to need a name, a last name. Most important is you're going to need an email address so that you can record the sale. So I'm just going to drop in a dummy email address to show you. Then slide on down to the end of this page and you're going to click save. Now I'm going to actually make the sale. I'm going to choose the item. They're going to choose the silver sponsorship and they're purchasing one. So I'm going to put in a quantity of one, click the blue button that says record sale and you get a green banner confirmation at the top. The last part of the sponsorship process is adding the sponsor's logo. The sponsor is attached to the person that made the purchase. So in the last example, it was Lori Flower Shop. So I go to that bidder record and I can upload an image. So I've got a pretty flower shop logo that I'm going to attach to it. And it's that simple. Now, when I flip over to the website and see my sponsors, the silver sponsorship is listed there with the logo. So I just want to recap the sponsorships. You've got your sponsorships with tickets, where you'll set it up as a ticket item, the quantity of tickets, market is sponsorship. You have your sponsorships without tickets. You'll set that up as a for sale item, no tickets, so there's no quantity, market as is sponsorship. And then after the sponsorship is sold, you'll upload the logo to the bidder record that made the purchase. 
Adding a logo is a function that you, as the admin only, can handle. However, it'll make it look nice and neat once it's up on the website. Good luck. Hope you sell lots of sponsorships. Okay. Okay, so that's sponsorships. Now we're going to talk about tickets. And I want you to listen to me. Tickets are a special item. And they have their own unit within the Octria platform as the tickets unit within the dashboard. I'm going to show you how to set those up. So we're going to talk about tickets for admission. And I asked you to think about this in the end of the last webinar. Are you going to sell a single ticket? Are you going to sell couple tickets? Are you going to do early bird tickets? Um, do you want to set an entire table of tickets? And then, of course, I'm sure you want to include some meal choices. So I created a video. Here we go to the walkthrough. Admission tickets have unique properties, so they have their own home on the Octria dashboard. So I'm sliding down and clicking the tickets. You probably want to set up your max number of tickets if there's a max number of seats that you have available. If you don't have a max, then you can leave that at zero. Let's look at setting up a single ticket item. I'm going to slide down to tickets and I'm going to show you what this looks like with one that's already created. But this is going to be a single ticket for a single admission. So I'm going to set the item number, give it a description that includes one ticket in there. And the most important thing is to create a value as well as quantity of tickets that are sold with that admission and put a nice image in there so it looks really good. Lots of organizations will sell early bird tickets and they tend to do so at a discount to get people to buy tickets a lot earlier. So let me show you what an example of that would look like. An early bird ticket, put in a description, put in what it includes, and usually it's a touch lower. So my other ticket was 100, I'm going to make this one 75. Show how many admission tickets are included and then this is the important part. You want to set an open and close sale time for when you want that to open and close. And that's called your online bidding here. So this is what that looks like and you want to set the exact time so that it opens and closes. Lots of times organizations will want to create a couple ticket. This means that both bidders will share the same number. So here's an example. I'm giving it a nice title that matches that. The description includes two tickets, two admissions, two drinks. So of course, the quantity needs to reflect that. The number of mission tickets needs to reflect that. And most important is coming down here and clicking the always share a bidder number between guests when this is purchased. I always want to put a nice image on that. So I've got a ticket item that has two tickets on it to reflect that. I'm going to slow this down for you for a sec to show you always share a bidder number for guests when purchased. So you want to click that to a yes. I've got a big yellow box around that for you. So you can pause this and do it yourself. Let's talk tables. Here's an example for a table of eight. So I will set up the item just like I normally do, include a nice description, and then the most important part is when I come down, I include a value that's appropriate as well as the quantity, the number of admission tickets that are included. And, and then the other option is to create a table when sold. Some people want to do it, some people don't. Okay, meal choices. Do you think I skipped them? No, this is under bitter because a bitter is the one that's actually eating the food. So I'm going to bitter registration and then I'm going to slide down to registration options and how about some fish, some chicken and some vegetarian. Load those in and then you can require a meal choice or not require a meal choice upon sale. And then you can also set a time and a date for when the meal choices need to be made by. That way you don't get any people making last minute changes. Now you're going to want to run your reports. You can choose your columns that you want to include or exclude on your reports by clicking the choose columns button and turn on and turn off the ones that you're looking for. This is the same procedure you'll use on any of the Octory reports. Slide on down at the bottom, then you can export as a CSV, XLS, or PDF. 
Okay, let's see how this looks on the website. I'm gonna purchase an early bird ticket, continue to contact details, put in my email and my information. I'm gonna go ahead and skip. I'm not gonna put in a password at this time. I'm gonna choose the fish, cover my expenses, agree and pay by credit card. And playing the purchaser role, I'm gonna go back into my email. Now I can see I get an email and it clearly shows me what I've purchased. And if I wanna go and update any of my details, including putting in a credit card or changing any of my information, I can do so from the system directly. Again, like I said, if those went too fast, it's okay, hit pause, hit rewind. That's what those navigation buttons are there for in this video. I'm gonna tie this up with a nice bow like you would be doing for your supporters, donors, bidders with some communication tips. Um, the system emails within the Autria platform are already set up for you. However, some groups like to make some modifications to make them a little more personal. Here are some suggestions that have um, that you may want to take a look at, um, but I want to explain to you exactly what is triggered and when. This is for your system emails. A ticket's statement triggers when you're selling via the dashboard. So if somebody comes in at the door or if somebody comes into your office and says, hey, I want to give you cash or, or check for the event, um, that will trigger a ticket statement. That's when you're using the sell tickets page. An e-ticket is triggered when a purchase is made online. That means the person actually made the purchase themselves, either from your website um, or from their mobile device. They went onto your website and made the, the, uh, the purchase there. Um, a lot of groups may want to change the system emails to encourage people that purchase tickets for themselves and for some friends, like for tickets or sponsors, um, to update their guest information. A lot of times they'll make the purchase, but then they won't really update the rest of the info. So you want to encourage them. And this is just some sample wording. Details of your tickets are shown below. To expedite check-in, please click the update button below to update the guest information information, et cetera. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Um, here is what an e-ticket would look like. And here is what a ticket statement would look like. They're two different pieces. Um, so I do have a walkthrough video for you on this. Let's see how it looks. Altria system emails are transactional in nature. A lot of groups will want to modify some. Some of the ones that are most popularly modified are your ticket statements and your e-tickets. There's a lot of information on here, but don't worry, you can pause it later. So communications, and then I go to system emails and I can see my e-ticket as well as my ticket statement. The e-ticket is sent automatically if somebody makes a purchase online and then the ticket statement is sent if that transaction is made from you, the admin, from the dashboard. And you can preview each of these and you can see they're very basic. A lot of groups will want to update it and have some more information on it. And this is what you would do on any of these system emails. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in a little text box and modify it to include some information to encourage them to update their bidder records as necessary. So I just have a copy paste here. I'm going to drop that in there. That looks good. I can even modify this a little bit. I can make a section bold and then I can center it. And you can do this on any of the system emails within the Octria platform. Groups will want to include maybe their tax ID number, when their next volunteer opportunities are, and you can see how nicely that looks within the system. I'm gonna save it. And then you can also preview how this is gonna look on a mobile device. Do take a look at that and make sure it looks exactly as you wish. The person that receives the email can go ahead and just quick click that button to update their details as necessary. And yeah, you see that logo up there? You can change that too. I'm going to pause right here in case you want to take a screenshot and slow this down. For tickets, there's a ticket statement and that's triggered when you're selling via the dashboard. There's an e-ticket which is triggered when you're purchased online. And the green box at the bottom is the one that I showed you as a suggested email edit. 
as you're moving from the sales phase to the planning phase for your actual event, you're going to want to look at your tables and your reports. So in order to access the table reports, I come into bidders, I come to tables, and I can sort these by flipping the little arrow back and forth, and I can include or exclude any additional columns. I'm gonna add meal choice to this one. Um, and then you can exclude the ones that you don't need also. That locks in my choices. Then I can export this as a CSV, a PDF, or an XLS file. So I know I went over a lot of information and you're setting up your auction, you're doing a whole lot of work, but you want to test it and that's okay. You can create a test auction within the Octria platform. Go to auction, slide on down to create test auction, and this will give you a complete duplicate of your event. That way you can mess around in a safe environment, share it with some volunteers, share it with your uh um, check in people, your check out people, the rest of your group so that you can um, get acclimated with the platform without making any uh, modifications to your pristine data. So I always suggest people to go to auction, create test auction, and use that environment to um, get yourself up and running and make sure you have your expectations in line for the day of, the night of, the week of. So like I said, this is the second in a quad webinars, I'm calling them, um, hang out with us and watch the one on items, don donations, raffles, and then hang out a little longer. And we're going to talk about how to open, bid, sell, close, and collect. And if you missed the prior one, that's available on Playback too. So Octria Launch is an add-on feature. And just in time, Tracy's here to share the details. Yes, thanks, Lori. Yes, Octria Launch is an add-on. It's a great service where our Octria specialists will meet with your event setup team to help that you ensure that your setup is done the way you want and runs smoothly. And it is designed for those who want to leave the setup to the Octria team. It includes three video calls and ongoing chat support, and even includes a review training call before you go live. And we also have Octria Assist, and it's a single 45-minute video call, kind of a la carte style. And you can ask questions to an Octria specialist, and they'll walk through the answers. We'll share screens specifically on your event to walk through those answers. Thanks, Tracy. And then I always encourage everybody to stay in touch with us. We post regularly to Facebook and Twitter. We have over 500 pins that go directly to donation request pages. We have an entire catalog of webinars that's up on our YouTube page. And I invite every single person to join us on our Facebook group. Tracy, I always say this is the nicest page on Facebook. Do you agree? Absolutely agree with that. It is people like you that are running their auction and event fundraisers. We have all sorts of event planners and auctioneers that also chime in as well. If you're stuck, you can always email us hello at octria.com or click the square chat box button up in the right hand corner of your dashboard. And then like Tracy said, if you want to add on launch to your emerald or diamond plan, please do so. Our launch team is standing by. Thank you everybody for joining us. Tracy, wrap it up for us. Oh, thanks, Lori. It's been a great time together. And we hope we, you crush your fundraising goals. And we, we really do hope you have bids that soar.